Liam Newitt presents The Curse of the Devious Gobbler's Gauntlet of Grief. Oh, mother, what have they done to you? This is not the way I wanted it to be. I've tried my hardest to help you, to make you survive. I've always wanted to be this way, and yet they've never done this before. Those stupid, horrible wishes, they hurt you. How could they be so evil? I can feel the lump in my throat having to swallow it all. Just because of them, they killed you. And now they're making me drain out my own life, spreading out my own tears. Why? And with an arrow, they just <sighs> hit you like that. It's not normal. I just wanted you to stay alive. I wish you were still with me, Mother. You're not anymore. I will always miss you. All the time. I'll be happy to see you once again, once I get into heaven. It'll be so good to reunite with you. My one and only amazing mother. The mother of my devious gobbler life. And those wishes deserve to deal with the debts of the sorrow that I held in my hand. All this can't even talk correctly. Get it out. I wish you could still be with me, Mother. Melt me away. You hold me in your arms day in, day out. You make me feel so different compared to what I used to know. Help my hand. I fell in love. You made my dad absolutely happy. And you made me happy too. And instead, those wishes had to hit you down and take you away. I don't like that. But don't worry, Mother. I know a way. I will make those wishes understand that they have done something wrong. And it doesn't matter how many times I will cry. I will make them cry too. Yes, I've got just the plan. And it will be time for them to know just who they have messed with. I will get my vengeance. Just for you, Mother. I promise. I promise. Those wishes will not know what's coming. Other the side of evil. And they're taking over. The power, the love, that I held for you once upon a time. They've let it go. And now, now, things are about to change for them. Things are about to change for them. But before I do anything, I'm just going to sit here for a while. Looking 
directly at you. And pray for you to live a happy life up in the skies above. I love you. I always will. I love you, mother. But how many times have I tell you? I'll always love you. Even when you're gone. Now, I stay in peace. Rest, rest in peace. I'll miss you. And I love you so much, Mother. I wish I had a special way to make you come back to life. But I don't think I have that kind of resource to make you live longer. Be brought back to life. But now I guess it's time to make my revenge on those evil wishes. Make them understand just how much they have hurt my heart. Just by killing you, my sweet, sweet, lovable mother. Well, If you could even say anything, you'd wish me good luck. I can say that just from your floating soul. I'll come back with the rest of the family for your burial later on. And just so any animals don't eat, you know, your corpse, I'll take you with me home to mine. Just so I know you're safe. And then I will make an evil spell. That will cause all the wishes to cry endlessly. Cry for as long as they need it. Forever and always. They will know that I. I will have them crying for what they have done. I don't know how many times they will stop their cries. But I will tell you now. Their effects will make them worth each and every teardrop that falls from the wishes' eyes. Yes, just what I needed. Right in the softness of my arms. I guess. But first, before I do, Maybe, just maybe, maybe I need to clear my mind before I move on to do anything. Yes, perhaps I could do something like that. I should rest. Just give myself a chance to just settle for a bit. Before I move forward and make any hazardous things happen to those wishes. Even though I'm desperate to make them, you know, mourn the death of you, mother. Well, I guess this is it. You're coming with me. The cobbler picks up his mother by the hand. Holding her gently within his soft, gripping arms. The sense of his pride still living inside. 
he takes her safely back to the well, where he places her gently on his very own spare bed in the guest bedroom. He places himself in his own bed in his own bedroom. But first he says, Okay, mother. I will get some rest. And then... I will place my revenge on those evil wishes. Make them realize just how much they have ruined my life. By destroying and killing the parent that I loved the most. Well, here it goes. Sweet tricks of hatred have been gifted to me. Sweet treats of hatred. And they, they will get my vengeance soon. But, I guess I should rest first. Just rest. But then, I can feel my body growling with the sadness. Well, now. Get to bed, Gobble. Get to bed. Get some rest. We can deal with this another day. Okay. A tiny little shuffles of his footsteps across the carpet as he moves towards his own bedroom. We're so soft. Step. Step. Step, one by one, the footsteps leading to the door before stopping. With the movement of the door handle, the door creaked open. Slowly opening for him. He steps inside the bedroom and closes the door behind him and lays on his bed tucking himself into the colours. We were trying to get his sleep. He couldn't at first, tossing and turning in the bed, trying to get himself comfortable after noticing the death of his own parent. But he managed and drifted off to sleep. He was snoring, and snoring, and snoring even more. As time passed by, he just continued. He was in deep sleep for hours as he passed by, just resting away the pain that he had gained from a loss. With everything all locked up inside the cave, it was ugly. Well, the goblin just remained in his sleepy form, wondering if ever his love will go into remembering just how well he knew everything. And his sleep was so deep. He was dreaming about his amazing times that he had spent with his mother before her passing. Smiles upon his face as he remembered all the happy moments he had before the loss. It was amazing. Wonderful. Time just flew by. Sam was easily present. All the dreaming and love was something else. Entirely something fun. Something special. And yet, 
By the time the hours passed by, it was ready to sleep. In utter silence. Until his alarm sets off. Beeping. He moves closer. Grabbing his clock. Dragging it by. And pressing the button. To stop the alarm from beeping. Before placing. Back away. To where it was prior. That morning he prepared with his usual morning routine and then he realised that his mother's corpse was still in his guest room. He checked on the corpse of his long lost, smiling as he saw her, still the slight pale feel of his long tears still striped across his face. He couldn't help but look at her with a big, huge pride held within him. It was so dark, yet so sad for him to see her go. But after the routine started, it was back to his famous, perfect, evil room where he would set up and cast a spell. Well, I told her that I would do this and make those evil wishes regret what they have done. And here I am, right now, doing just what I said. One by one, taking resources from across the forest. He came back with them, began to cast the spell in trying to make the wishers understand his true feeling of hurt. Not only hurt, but sadness. Of the morning of his lost one. The morning of a long lost soul. And the most amazing of parents that taught him some of the best tricks within his magical world. As well as other usual things that adults would teach a child. Such as being well behaved. He created it. He even used the arrow from within his mother as one of the ingredients to catch the idea of this spell. <laughs> yes, just yes, I know exactly what I am doing. Just yes, I know exactly how to make everyone feel. <laughs> this is going to be fun. This is going to be so much fun. Those wishes are about to experience something so horrid. Purple clouds of darkness will wheel over the village. And then it will rain, but with every raindrop, any umbrellas they hold, they will just, you know, break, go, die off, and then land on the human forms of those evil wishes, and then, just then, it will make them cry. For hours on end, as if they are mourning the death of someone else, or even their own friends or family members. Well, 
It's nearly done. Nearly done. Just got to add these, and these, and these, and a little bit of this. Hmm. Touch of salt and pepper, even though it's not food. And this. And, ooh, where is it? Ah, oh, got it. Placing each item into this pot. Stirring it around. Aha! And the piece de la resistance. The final ingredient. By your own captured tears. <laughs> They're going to love this. It's time for all of you to know just how much you've made me cry, wishes. Stirring it around. Clouds came out from the chimney of this. Well, well, I say the chimney, but mainly the well. In puffs of smoke. Before reaching the sky as purple clouds. The clouds became into some form of dark spell. The darkness from within the purple crowd, turning the world a little darker around the village. Unknown to what made it so dark, everyone went out, hearing the sound of the rumbling of the thunder. Some with umbrellas in their hands, and some wearing raincoats. It started to form, but even touching the clothing of the wishers would make them cry. And they did. Yes, yes, it worked. I knew it would. Cry, wishers. Cry. And don't stop crying. This is just what I wanted. For everyone to cry. Yes, don't stop those tears. Keep crying and crying. Keep crying and crying. Just like that. Isn't that the thing that you need? To feel the power of the morning of death. <laughs> You're too deaf to hear. Just the things that I have held deep within my mind. But now, the crying of your tears and if you want to eat. Taking a feeling to take in just knowing what you guys have done. Well, have fun dropping all those tears. Oh, I'm going to love seeing this village blood with all the teardrops of all the people, including. Some of the ones that I knew once before. Of course, Candle. What was the other name? Chadwick. And a few others. Those terrible weed kids of the Wishbone Village. Even they will cry. And they won't stop until I make them cry. Go. Away. Yes. Ah, oh, yes. This is so relaxing. Letting the rain drop upon them. 
and watching them cry for hours on end. This is so good. So relaxing. So fun. I love it. However, this is just what I needed. Just the thing I wanted. Well, I guess I will still watch from my home. Watch the entire village venture into all its sorrows and cry for hours on end. Time turns from hours to days and then the spell came to a stop. Okay, that's enough. I've had them cry for long enough. You've probably had enough of it now, anyway. You know what? I'm going to let this village go back to its peaceful ways. Stopping the spell from casting, he eliminated it. Creating other spells that could turn the place back to its normal way. Of which, normality returned successfully. Now that's good. Perfect. But there's one thing I must do before anything else. With an instrument of a horn, he blew through it. A horn that would call in all the other devious goblins to appear right by him. Taking out the body of his lost mother, holding her, he was the host, all the other gobblers surrounding him, he said. Well, family, friends, and other gobblers around us. Why none of our gobblers has gone and passed away? being shot by one crazy arrow. And it was those wishes that caused this to happen. Well, we're all gathered here to share our remembrance of this lost woman, who was a mother, an auntie, and many more. Mothers, aunties, grandparents. Everything you could wish for, this woman was that. Such a wonderful woman. Always was. I loved every day with her. Being my own mother. And this is what happens to her. Gets killed. Where there's evil wishes. Well, I treat them with respectful vengeances. So they could understand just exactly what they were doing. Making it well. It was all fun. Good. And fun and better than anything else. I can't even talk much. But this woman was a perfect woman. And one with so many happy memories. One that is now gone left behind. That's why we are gathered here, in order to remember her.
as we bury her into the gobbler grave. Well, before all the memories we liked, how she would make us visit beaches, have ice creams, play happy games, make us laugh, make us cry, all the amazing memories I held dear to her. And now she will be buried happily. A new world. And down she goes, descending into her grave, becoming a long lost gobbler, down from all the others, living with all the others, either in heaven or in hell. Let's hope that God keeps her safe, no matter where she goes. And I click of all my love, and all the other people's love. Hope it stays with her forever. Rest in peace. To you, Jessica. What was lost? What was gone? It changes the world. I had been. Just had been a change to the world, and now she comes right down into the dirt. That's right, everyone. Cover it up. Make her remember us as she does. Have the burial that we gave her. It was time. Well, how's that done? She's buried. And now we can move on. But she will never be forgotten. For as long as I shall live. I've done just what the villagers of the Wishbone wanted. I've seen them cry as well as me. But after all this, I'm just going to take a long rest. Because I have another vengeance plan coming up soon. This time, it will be something to do with the heat and the sand. Hmm. That sounds like a spoiler, but her well. It's coming, so those wishes better be prepared for my next part of my vengeance. Good night to all. Sweet dreams.